Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and there is, <laughs> excuse me, these guys, these, uh, whatever you want to call them, internet sleuths, or whatever you want to call them, these guys have gone nuts with some different things, and I've done a little bit of work myself, and uh, I was actually grilling hamburgers and hot dogs last night, and just getting overwhelmed, I was watching the Masters, and I was just sitting there getting overwhelmed by some of the things that guys like... TAIG and Stefan Huber and this Ripple Eye and all these guys had, had were working on just going feverishly finding all kinds of things about this whole SEC debacle. So I'm going to try to show you some of them here today, and I've mixed some other things in that I've been doing. But first, let's talk about this. One of my sponsors, Kava Network. Go give them a follow at Kava underscore platform. Ethereum Cochain Alpha was amazing. Beta is live and already a powerhouse. Mainnet launches May 10th, 2022. Um, 30 plus pioneers, 464,000 blocks, 160,000 transactions, 7 plus deploys, 12.6 thousand plus wallets. So these guys are working hard. So go give them a follow. Um, especially any, also any of you guys that want to uh, think are thinking about like developers that are thinking about joining their pioneer program, go check them out. All right. I asked, I specifically asked if we could get a cool take on what's been going on in crypto for the last few days. And the official cool guy of the digital asset investor channel has delivered on a Monday. You can be cool on a Monday too. Here we go. Second on the list, we got to talk about those digital assets. Coinbase giving you the head fake, telling you Doge and Quan are listed. Quan ain't bad, but don't chase those green candles. On to that Ripple case. Big moves for Ripple, baby. The judge told the SEC the second or third time to turn over the documents about their internal trading practices. They didn't want to do it. Why is that? Now Ripple wants to depose the ex-employee Hinman. And the SEC is opposing that motion. They're trying to squash that subpoena. Why? Why can't we ask some questions? He stated that Ethereum doesn't look like a security. Meanwhile, the SEC just said, Hidman never said that. That was his opinion. Pretty sure I saw that guy testifying in front of Congress. They also said that it's not fair. Social media are making these guys out to be bad guys. I just realized, I thought he had put a new one out. I just real looked down and realized this was a flashback. But hey, we can have we can have flashbacks, uh, cool flashbacks too on this channel. All right, let's move uh, along. Okay, we're going um, we're going to this. <laughs> this one's pretty crazy. Um, where do you see this? This is Laura Shin who wrote the book The Cryptopians about Ethereum and and the founding of Ethereum and all this stuff. Watch this. Shadow. And this is from Ripple Eye. He found this. Shadow folks of the Ethereum Foundation who kind of controlled uh, things in the background, but were never really named. How did you even find these people, and what is their power over the Ethereum Foundation? <laughs> Yeah, so this is toward the latter part of the book, but a lot of people also talked about what they call the shadow government of the Ethereum Foundation. And it's different people who um, wield a lot of influence, or at least at that time, because my, so my book ends in early 2018. So kind of in probably the 2017 era, the, the shadow government started, and there were a lot of people that were wielding influence in Ethereum, in the foundation, but were not necessarily people with official roles. And so a lot of people uh, said to me, you know, this is going on and, you know, we don't like it for, for these reasons. And what's interesting is the people that were named as being kind of the big power players in this shadow government, that, you know, it was fascinating. People would be scared to even mention their names to me. They would be scared to say that they had even just been at an event, not even that they'd been like doing anything at the event, but just that they'd been there witnessing something you know, historic. So, I mean, people were, yeah, they seemed frightened of them, which was fascinating. And um, even, you know, I, I mentioned, so yeah, I am giving maybe a few spoilers, but 
when I asked Vitalik about one of them, he whistled, you know, like he was just surprised that I mentioned the name or, or just uneasy about it or I, I, you know, I don't know, but that was his response. So, um, yeah, clearly there's something. Well, there was, there was a lot of concern about, you know, is Ethereum sufficiently decentralized if Vitalik has so much power over the foundation? And I've asked you this before, but maybe you can give your thoughts again. Yeah, you know, actually my personal opinion is that it actually is, but only because Ethereum is so big now. That so now it's decentralized because it's big? Come on, this is a, what a sham this is. Now, um, but but let's stick with this, okay? The, the, the person, I went, what I did is I went and I bought um, her book in, in Kindle format so that I could search it. And I searched this shadow government thing because I was curious. And the guy in this clip that she mentioned that Vitalik Buterin just whistled his whistled and didn't didn't even want to say his name when she asked about him. She specifically names the guy. The guy that she's referring to, I, I put it right here. Thomas Greco was the guy's name, and that's the guy that uh, she when when she in the book it says that when she asked Vitalik and mentioned this guy's name, he, he's basically like, you know, like he didn't even want to mention the guy's name, but she also mentioned other names which I do have. She mentioned other names. I, I count four names total. What are those names? Maybe that's my mystery um, thumbnail. Mystery, um, what, what, what did she call them? Shadow government names. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say them all yet, but she did name them. She did name them. So I'll just make that my little mystery of the day the shadow government name list because I have them and I just gave you one. It's Thomas Greco and she named them. I didn't. So there you go. Um, so I, I went through her book a little bit and, and found a couple of interesting things as long as, as long as I was there. Here's one of the quotes out of her book. Some people speculated this shadow government had grown because the foundation was worried about the Securities Exchange Commission. If Ethereum didn't have a central point of failure, failure, it would succeed even if the SEC came after the foundation. All right. So then let's see. Then then I found this one. Check this out because I don't. I'm not a hundred percent positive. Um, I've reached out to John Deaton on this, but I don't know that we knew about this phone call. This is from her book. The Ethereum Foundation eventually reached out to the SEC. And on June 1, 2018, Aya Vitalik, some Enterprise Ethereum Alliance members, and the EF, uh, Ethereum Foundation lawyers had a call with SEC officials who asked them how decisions were made about the Ethereum protocol, whether or not the foundation owned Ethereum, and details about the sale. The SEC declined to comment on whether there was a meeting or what might have been discussed. On June 18th, now I think she got this date wrong. I think she meant to write June 14th. On June 18th, a senior SEC official, who would have to be Bill Hinman, who was said to have been in the meeting, said in a speech that based on his understanding of the present state of Ether, it was not a security. I want to do a refresh here because I want to see what some of the comments um, say it ain't so. Uh, ding. And then this guy's like, oh. <laughs> so, those reactions make me wonder if if this is something new that we didn't know okay so then i was doing some searching on twitter as well because i wanted to see if i if there was ever any reference to ethereum and a shadow government this guy replied to a tweet he says ethereum's chat this is Ju july 9th 2018 ethereum's shadow government hard forked to fix the dow hack bitcoin mining pools voted on which fork to support when a software upgrade introduced a long unintended fork. Now, this guy's referencing the DAO hack with the, the Ethereum shadow government. You know what? Have you, you ever wondered why they never went after? They know who the, in her whole book, she says they, she pretty much knows who did the DAO hack. And she mentions in that same interview that Ripple I found, because I watched some of it, she mentions that, uh, that yeah we know I know who he is 
And I, she was kind of wondering, I don't, I don't know why they haven't gone after him yet. Why would they not go after the guy who hacked the Dow? Why would they not go after the guy? Man, there's a lot of stuff buried in this Ethereum thing. Now, watch what Stefan Huber went and did. I was not aware that Jay Clayton and William Hinman organized the Alibaba IPO together, but good to know. Here they, here they are right here. Okay, now, then he goes on. I mean, this guy, Stefan Huber, was on fire. We get to the core. Alibaba Ant Group was taken public by Clayton Sullivan and Cromwell and Simpson Thatcher Hinman. Alibaba wanted to buy MoneyGram, but the deal failed. Ripple, however, got it. Alibaba then bet on JP Morgan Quorum and Ethereum, which is helped by the corrupt SEC. Here's a picture of Jack Ma of Alibaba with Bill Hinman. I, that is unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. Folks, it's it's getting juicy. I mean, really juicy. Now, I don't know what this video... It looks like this video is from Simpson Thatcher's website. I don't know. I don't know what that's from. But that is a pretty wild photo right there, if you ask me. Guess what? Ant Group Alibaba is using Quorum on Ethereum. Companies named a list that are using consensus Quorum include Ant Group. Then he goes on, the first time I've seen the explicit word corruption in the context of this lawsuit, it will not be the last time, 100%. Gary Gensler, your predecessor will go down in history as the most corrupt SEC chairman and you as the one who tried to cover it up. You know what they say about the cover up sometimes being worse than the crime? Now look at this, and I'm going to finish here, folks, because there's so much that I've seen today. Watch this. Folks, I think I may have finally, I may finally have it. Challenge my timeline. Obama, Alibaba was investigated for irregularities by the SEC. Then Trump wins the election. Jay Clayton, former, former Alibaba advisor, becomes SEC chair. Alibaba files a merger request with SEC to buy MoneyGram. Clayton brings in Hinman, who handled Alibaba's IPO, was named Dealmaker of the Year with Lei Ming Chen, Alibaba, in 2014. Clayton and Hinman want Alibaba to do the MoneyGram deal, but United States National Security Council withdraws authority from the SEC and rejects the MoneyGram Alibaba deal. Three days later, it is announced that instead of Alibaba, Ripple gets the deal and MoneyGram wins. The SEC, Hinman, and Clayton start working with the Brooklyn Project, Consensus, Quorum, and Ethereum Alliance. Alibaba JP Morgan Ethereum Alliance gets back at Ripple with the free pass and regulatory clarity for Ethereum. This could also explain the huge hatred for Ripple. Maybe Ripple was responsible for not using MoneyGram to test Ethereum-based cross-border payments. SEC turns to big deal lawyers, and then there's this. He says it fits like a glove. That's why Ripple stated that Ethereum is Chinese-controlled, and that's why Vitalik Buterin reacted that way. He was caught and kicked full in the balls. This is him right here. Looks like Ripple team is sinking to new levels of strangers. And they're claiming that their shit coin should not be called a security for public policy reasons, namely because Bitcoin and Ethereum are Chinese controlled. Then he goes, goes on. The Ethereum free pass and regulatory jail was JP Morgan and Alibaba's revenge on Ripple for bounced MoneyGram deal in which Ripple likely pointed to the China background. This also explains the irrational hatred many Ethereum maxis and founders have for Ripple and XRP. MoneyGram was just a just a key to, to getting needed experience to, for uh, in cross-border payments and blockchain. I suspect that all the deals with China and Russia were concluded and intensified pr precisely for this reason. Okay, you know, I'll give you one other. I don't know if, and, and he doesn't mention this, but I don't know if you've noticed, but later on, Stellar worked out a deal, the same, another deal with MoneyGram. And later, and, and then we started seeing Stellar pop up. The people from Stellar started popping up in some of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, um, some of their, their uh, little conferences that they have online. Like it was almost like they were they were uh, brought into the group or something. I don't know if you noticed that. That was kind of weird. I'm the digital asset invest. And by the way, this is these are all his thoughts. I'm just showing you showing you what his thoughts are here. 
a lot of it makes sense. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not. That's a golf ball. I'm, a, I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that Bill Hinman is going to have an interesting week because this, you know, Navy SEALs have something that they call uh, Hell Week. This is Hinman Week. Any of you out there that would, would like to uh, make a, uh, a graphic for Bill Hinman Week, um, we'd love to have it. I'll show it.